Hi guys, it's almost midnight here in Paris. I just came home uh, after my lecture I gave in, in Paris, um, um, the lecture about uh, the language of war and the war of uh, propaganda in Russia and how, how the war, the full-scale invasion of uh, Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine affected language and political and media discourse. And so uh, I just wanted to share with you how, how it went. Uh, I have a couple of stories. They're not very optimistic though. So the lecture was both uh, in Russian and in French. Uh, I was speaking Russian and it was translated simultaneously. Uh, into French. I speak French and uh, my, my level of um, French of language is uh, pretty high, uh, but it's not enough for me to give a lecture and uh, moreover to, to answer the question, but, uh, but I speak fluently. Uh, and so um, I was talking about, as I said, uh, about uh, the language of war and uh, the language of propaganda. But first of all, I, I, I wanted to uh, tell you a story how I got there. So I took all Uber. And uh, the Uber driver, uh, he asked me about my name. Uh, everybody asks me about my name because <laughs> it's not uh, like um, very, it sounds strange for, for a lot of people. So people are interested uh, about the roots and, you know. So he asked me about my name and uh, I, I said my name was Russian. Uh, and uh, and uh, so he, we started just talking about, about Russia and Ukraine and that uh, I told him that I lived in Russia and I, I used to live in Ukraine as well and now I live in the United States uh, and so he used it as a pretext to, uh, to, to share his political views with me on what is going on in Russia and Ukraine and uh, the United States I mean not just not political views but just some views uh, first of all he told me that in his opinion uh, Russia and Ukraine it's the same country uh, then he told me that Russian and Ukrainian uh, languages are the same uh, and uh, I interrupted him and I told him, well, uh, Russia and Ukraine, uh, those are countries that both were uh, in the uh, in the former Soviet Union. Uh, that's what they have in common, but the culture is absolutely different. And uh, these are absolutely two different countries. Uh, and uh, as for language, the language is different. And I told him I, um, I, I speak both Russian and Ukrainian, and I can tell that it's very difficult for, for the Russian people to, um, to learn Ukrainian, uh, by the way, uh, because, uh, because, because of the pronunciation and uh, different words and stuff like that. So I, I gave him I gave him uh, um, like a small lecture about Russian and Ukrainian language and then he told me and then he switched to the situation in the United States and he told me that uh, our president Joe Biden uh, is crazy and uh, um, he just uh, he, he feels sorry for us and uh, he hopes that uh, we will have another president uh, in November uh, and uh, at that point we got to the um, to the library where I was giving a lecture so I said goodbye but he was actually very friendly that's all he told me and he was ready to listen uh, uh, when I started explaining something to him he was ready to listen so uh, he gave me some hope although <laughs> it was all said especially especially you know um, today uh, when uh, we knew uh, about Alexei Navalny uh, and uh, so after that I gave a lecture and it was good I had uh, a good audience and uh, very good smart questions and uh, in, in Russian uh, and I liked I liked it very much uh, but then after the lecture I just wanted to socialize and I started <laughs> talking to people and that was my mistake because I uh, I showed uh, that I actually knew French that I I could understand French and they could speak French and so people started talking to me they, because they didn't expect it uh, from the lecturer who came from the the United States, Russian orig originally Russian, so they didn't expect that I, I would speak French. And so they, they started uh, asking some questions and so on. And then uh, that was that woman who came to me. And after that, that woman, uh, French, uh, French woman, so she talked to me like maybe for half an hour or even more. So like Putin uh, with his history history lecture <laughs> or something like that and guys I was shocked by what she told me so she gave me like a full package of Russian propaganda narratives not only about Europe like 
without if we should help Ukraine and send military assistance. I would understand that. But she gave me, as I said, like the full package. First of all, she told me all Ukrainians are Nazis. And uh, she said, uh, you know, you, um, um, you are making fun of the word uh, denazification. But uh, it's not actually funny because Ukraine needs the denazification and Putin is right. Uh, have you seen all those videos that Ukrainian, the bodies of Ukrainians, they are covered with swastikas? And they said, uh, well, uh, I thought, um, I think that some of those videos you are talking about, I was very cautious, uh, might be fabricated. And she said, no, you are not well informed. I, I will send you some videos and screenshots. Their bodies are all covered with swastikas. And uh, she said that, um, so the Ukrainians are Nazis and uh, Europe is just... Um, uh, choking uh, from uh, from Ukrainian immigrants, uh, from the refugees, uh, because they want everything for free. They come to Poland because she's originally from Poland, or her family, because not, she 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 lives uh, in France for a long time, as far as I understood by just by her language. Uh, and uh, by the way, she was uh, constantly correcting my French. Uh, in not a very nice way. Uh, and so she was um, uh, telling me that all Ukrainians are Nazis uh, and uh, Europe is just uh, suffocating uh, because of uh, the immigrants from Ukraine uh, who want uh, to get everything for free and that Polish people, they are dying in the hospitals because the doctors, they refuse to, to treat them uh, because they, they are busy treating Ukrainians for, for free. Um, after that, she told me about the horrors of the mobilization in Ukraine, how they grab people on the streets. That's the, all those stories Russian propaganda likes very much. Uh, and um, then she uh, she told me that uh, it's uh, the United States uh, who is like fueling that war. Uh, put fuel into this war by sending military assistance uh, and uh, it's not Putin. I said, well, Putin is someone who uh, actually started that war, uh, didn't he? And uh, she said, well, there are always two sides and now we have two sides, Ukraine and the United, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Russia and the United States. <laughs> so it's uh, one more Putin's narratives, narrative because Putin always says that it's not the war between Russia and Ukraine, it's a war between, uh, between um, Russia and the whole West and um, predominantly um, the United States. Uh, and so I can't even describe what she was telling me, all those stories about swastikas and about Ukrainians, uh, like they, um, they are sending, uh, they are asking for money and military assistance from the Western countries countries, although uh, uh, Ukrainians uh, are, are driving like li luxury cars and they're getting those cars from Europe. And uh, I just, I was flooded by <laughs> those fake news and uh, propaganda. And I was, um, all, you know, my French is not that good uh, as, for example, my English. So I'm not uh, I don't feel that free in expressing myself and in explaining things. So uh, I was um, in that position that I was just listening and I was saying something here and there, but I couldn't uh, have that monologue she had. And uh, by the way, about the monologue, she said that uh, the interview, Putin's interview with Tucker Carlson was great. Uh, because uh, Tucker Carlson uh, gave Putin an opportunity to talk for 32 minutes about history. And they said, I said, well, uh, maybe we should call it a lecture, not an interview. And, and she said, mm, well, uh, I, I, I would agree it was not an interview, but it was very good because we, we should know the history. We should know where it all came from. And uh, I said, why would you uh, invade other countries? and why uh, would you um, bomb other country and civilians uh, because of something that happened uh, 1,000 years ago? Uh, and she said, it makes total sense. And Putin explained it, she said. So, guys, I don't know. I, I'm so... 
mm, like upset and uh, I don't know, it's, it's just very sad. It's very sad that uh, Russian propaganda has such an influence uh, in Europe. I knew that Russian propaganda was, was pretty strong in France, but I didn't expect that level. So the, it was a lady who came to the lecture. Maybe she is, uh, I don't know, some professor, because she was always correcting my French. <laughs> maybe she's some, uh, maybe she's some language professor or something like that. So she's not a taxi driver. And she, she was, she was like that. So, and my friends in, in France, they told me there are a lot of people, people like that. Uh, so, um, what would be my conclusion <laughs> and take away from that story? My take away from this story and actually from a lot of other stories are uh, that I think uh, Russian independent journalist and Ukrainian journalist should, uh, should make more effort to, uh, to show their agenda to the West, to the Western countries. Maybe they should think about, I don't know, like opening some TV channels in English. Uh, I know it's not very easy, uh, it's easy to say, but uh, still. So they need, uh, they need to, to, to break through that uh, propaganda, uh, propaganda flood. And uh, they, they need to, to make sure that they are heard. Uh, Russian independent journalists, they should tell stories, more stories about uh, about Russia. And uh, Ukrainian journalists should tell more stories about Ukraine. So uh, in the Western countries, they would be more aware of what is going on. Uh, and the Western journalists, in their turn, for example, American journalists and uh, European, uh, they should pay, in my opinion, uh, I don't want to, to tell my colleagues what to do, but in my opinion, they should pay more attention uh, to, um, to what is going on in that region. Uh, and sometimes the countries are too concentrated of, uh, on what is going on inside, inside um, themselves, uh, and uh, they are not paying attention uh, to what is going on in in uh, in the region I'm talking about, uh, and for example, why um, the reason why actually a lot of Americans, as far as I understood, liked that interview, Putin's interview to Tucker Carlson, and they were impressed by the ability, Putin's ability um, of. Uh, just talking and remembering, uh, speaking for, for half an hour without any paper and remembering all those dates and names, although it doesn't make any sense. But the thing is that uh, I um, I'm like, as a Russian, I've heard those Putin's stories, those historical uh, research, <laughs> uh, historical lectures for many, many times. And those people who who hasn't heard those stories for many many times they would uh, they would fall for them uh so in my opinion we should uh, i am an american journalist as well so we should pay more attention um to what is going on in in russia and in ukraine uh, because russia russian propaganda uses our ignorance and uh to to Mm, uh, to pursue their goals. That's actually what I wanted to say. Thanks for watching.